early signing period is just under two months away, and that means results on the field are becoming more and more important as high school seniors start to finalize plans regarding their future. In this video, we'll take a look at who won and who lost this past weekend when it comes to recruiting. Whose world is this? The world is yours. The world is yours. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Whose world? Like we said, there is a lot of recruits taking trips right now, and every game counts. A lot of recruits are showing up, and these colleges, they have to win. Nobody, no recruit wants to go to a college, go to a game day, and they get blown out. So we're going to go over the winners and the losers. Our first winner, you guessed it, the Georgia Bulldogs. Another Saturday afternoon between the lines, another star-studded group of visitors for Georgia. Kirby Smart and his staff had a who's who of recruits on hand for the Bulldogs commanding 30 to 13 victory over upstart Kentucky. It was headlined by a pair of number one ranked prospects in 2022 cornerback Travis Hunter and 2023 defense alignment Lebius Overton. While Hunter, who has been committed to FSU since March of 2020, continues to say all the right things about the Seminoles, at least on social media, his trip to Athens on Saturday marked the second time he has attended a game at UG in less than a month. It also came just a few days after Smart landed a helicopter at his high school, which might be a telling sign as to where this recruitment is headed. Now, I, I know you FSU fans are in the comments, and I'm just saying, Kirby Smart pulled up in the helicopter. He's going hard right now. He's... Kirby Smart's going hard. He's going hard for uh, Travis Hunter, you know? And Travis Hunter visited UGA twice in less than a month. No, I get it. I saw what he put on Twitter. I understand that. That's my bad. That's my bad. I understand he's a seminal. But Kirby Smart, he trying hard. You know it. You know he's trying hard. He's trying hard. Other five-star visitors for Georgia on Saturday include a wide receiver, Luther Burden, who announces this week on CBS Sports, USC defense alignment commit, Michael Williams, who had good things to say to 247 Sports, and cornerback Jaheim Singletary. Florida top 247 linebacker commit Shamar James, top 247 edge rusher Marvin Jones Jr., and Alabama four-star athlete commit Jake Pope was spotted between the lines too. So were a, a number of blue chip underclassmen, including Caleb Downs, the number one ranked safety in 2023, and Trey Biles, number one ranked linebacker in 2023. Now, this was a perfect weekend for UGA to bring some recruits in. Kentucky, they was ranked set number 11, I believe. Maybe top 10. Maybe number 7. Kentucky was ranked, so it's supposed to be a good game. And UGA blew them out. Blew them out the stadium. So that was a perfect game to bring those recruits in. All these top 5 stars, and we busted up Kentucky when Kentucky is supposed to be good. So Georgia is our first winner. Now on to our second winner. <laughs> The Oklahoma Sooners. The Caleb Williams era is officially here as the former five-star recruit accounted for 361 yards of offense and five total touchdowns of Oklahoma's 52-31 win over TCU on Saturday night. If things go as planned for the Sooners, then one of Williams' future weapons spent the weekend in Norman as top 24-7 running back Gavin Sawchuck was in town on an official visit. Sawchuck, who was 24-7 sports peg nations, Number four running back and picked OU over Notre Dame and other backs in June is considered one of the fastest prospects in the class of 2022, given what he has done on the track. A 10-6 in the 100-meter dash. Now, this if homeboy is as fast as advertised, him in the backfield, and Caleb Williams at the Q, and Spencer Rattler behind him at the QB2, Oklahoma could be dangerous. Jordan saw Chuck on the sidelines pregame were two other official visitors and top 24-7 athlete Ezraf Thomas and top 247 defense alignment Hero Canoe, as well as 2023 top 247 athlete Nicholas Harbour. While the recruiting section might have been a little light compared to games prior, one would have to think that Lincoln Riley and the Sooners, who also landed a commitment on Tuesday from five-star defense alignment Gabriel Brownlow Dindy, will be working the phones over the next few days trying to sell top targets on the fact that they had the quarterback of the future in Williams. And he must be on the phone. Because four-star athlete and cornerback, Gendry Williams, has just committed to Lincoln Riley and Oklahoma Sooners. And that was a good get. So, I guess benching Spencer Rattler, putting the young buck in, getting Gabriel Brownlow Dendy, is all the right moves. Because now they got a top cornerback. They got one of the fastest running backs. Oklahoma, it might not be this year because of that defense. But with these commits, if not next year, the year after, y'all looking pretty good. Now for our first loser. The Miami Hurricanes. Where to begin? 
Miami not only dropped a six straight game to a Power 5 opponent on Saturday with a deflating 45-42 loss to North Carolina, but the Hurricanes saw arguably their top commit open his recruitment back up earlier in the week when top 24-7 cornerback Traquan Figans announced that he wanted to explore his options. Things obviously aren't going well on the field for Manny Diaz, who is now 16-14 as the head man in Coral Gables. But what's even more concerning for Miami is the state of recruiting. With less than two months to go under the early signing period, the Hurricanes hold just eight commitments in the class that ranks number 59 nationally. And not one of them calls South Florida home. Yikes. Now, that is, this is bad for the U. They don't got one Miami student athlete in high school committed to their school? First of all, Florida's probably one of the top states when it comes to football recruiting. And especially Miami. Y'all don't got one? And to be honest with you... 16 or 14 for Manny Diaz is better than I expected. I thought he was under 500. So, it might be time for Manny to pack them bags. Because if you don't got at least a five-piece Miami high school recruits committed to you, things ain't looking too good. But after talking about all that losing, our next winner, the Cincinnati Bearcat. Lou Fickle and Cole drew the short end of the stick with a noon kickoff against UCF, but Cincinnati still managed to make the best of it, hosting plenty of local talented 23s and 22s. Getting face time with prospective student athletes is always vulnerable, but what really makes the weekend a win for the Bearcats is the fact that they were able to down the Knights 56 to 21. That will be a major selling point moving forward for Cincinnati, who loves to recruit the Sunshine State. As it stands right now, the Bearcats' number one ranked AAC recruiting class includes three prospects that call Florida home. Wide receiver Marcus Peterson, defensive lineman Sigri Graham, and wide receiver Quincy Burroughs. All of them held Power 5 offers. Wow, space is a bit tight for Cincinnati right now in the 22 class. The program's third straight win over UCF could help with some difference makers in the Knights' backyard next cycle. 24-7 sports analyst Alan True also thanks the play of Cincy cornerback Mod Sauce Gardner, who could be a day one or day two pick in the upcoming NFL draft, is going to help the Bearcats connect more and more with kids in his hometown of Detroit. That's a good guy to have as a face of the program. Yeah, Sauce Gardner? Hey, yo, he's a dog. He might go round one. If y'all want to see a video on him, me breaking down his game, comment that below. But Cincinnati, you beating UCF, all them Florida kids is like, dang, our, own, our hometown school can't win? Let's go to Ohio, and I ain't talking about the Buckeyes. Our next winner, the Baylor Bears. There are a ton of second-year head coaches struggling right now. Baylor's Dave Aranda, however, isn't one of them. After downing a ranked BYU team 38-24 to in Waco on Saturday, the Bears are 6-1 and very much alive in the Big 12 race. I had no clue Baylor was 6-1. I'm going to keep it real with you. Baylor hasn't been involved in a ton of high-power profile recruiting battles this cycle, but Aranda and his assistants have managed to assemble a class that currently sits number 33 in the rankings. Go figure, the Baylor Bears has a better <laughs> recruiting class than Miami. That's even after Elite 11 finalist Zach Pyron flipped to Georgia Tech. Only time will tell how the Bears close things out, but Aranda and some ammo to work with on the recruiting trail over the next few weeks, especially with some other of the in-state schools struggling. Keep an eye on the game against Texas at the end of the month as Baylor is playing to pack McLean Stadium with as many blue chip recruits as possible for what could be a monumental win for Aranda. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the Baylor's making a comeback. I guess since Matt Rule left, they had a couple struggling years, but the new coach, Dave, he turned things around. And for our last loser, the Texas Longhorns. Texas have been telling top targets for months now that Oklahoma State was the game to attend. Hindsight is always 20-20, but Saturday, and more specifically the fourth quarter, did not go well for the Longhorns in the 32-24 loss to the Cowboys as UT managed just six yards of offense in the final period of play and ended up blowing what was once a 17-3 lead. Things aren't always going to go as planned, but Texas needed to show some sense of life on the offensive side of the ball after last week's blunder against Oklahoma. And that didn't happen with five-star wide receiver Evan Stewart, 2023 five-star quarterback Arch Manning, 2023 five-star running back Reuben Owens, and 2023 five-star wide receiver Jalen Hill, top 247 offensive lineman Ernest Green, Alabama top 247 tight end commit Jaleel Skinner, top 247 offensive lineman Malik Agbo, and plenty of others watching it on from the recruiting section. Success happens and fits and starts for the first year coaches. So this by no means the Steve Sarkeesian era is doomed or that Texas can't land plenty of those mentioned guys, including Manning, but it's disappointing for Texas to land in the loser section two weeks in a row. Yeah, Texas, y'all was put on the stage. Y'all was put on the stage. Recruits was coming in. Y'all had the game set up, but y'all couldn't, y'all couldn't finish it out. Oklahoma, that was that would be a huge win to get Arch Manning. You know, 
All right, we blew the bag. Oklahoma State, all right, Arch, come, come, come. Blew the bag again. So I don't think Arch Manning is going to Texas. I honestly think Arch Manning might go to Clemson. I got that, That's my dark horse school right now, Clemson Tigers. But those are the winners and losers after this past weekend of college football with all these recruits going to the colleges and watching these games and trying to figure out what's their future. Comment below if you'll switch any winner or any loser. Comment below if which school you think Arch Manning is going to. And which school you think Travis Hunter is going to? I know y'all think he's going to FSU. He said it. Okay, I'm sorry. But Kirby Smart is a smart man. If any kid seen the helicopter land at their school for them, you got to listen what they got what they talking about. So like I always say, man, if you love college football, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Share it out to all your buddies who also love college football. Like up the video for your boy and comment below your thoughts. Also comment below what video you would like to see next, whether it's college football recruiting or a top story in college football, like Spencer Rattler. But until next time, 